Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to another Title Talk. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO here at Independence Title. And today we have another amazing guest. He's also one of my neighbors, Mark Evans, the DM. Welcome to the show today. Thanks, Kevin, for having me, buddy. What's going on over there? Oh, it's great. It's great. Everything is fantastic. You know, we're we're so blessed that we were one of the industries that obviously due to Corona, we're in the middle of the pandemic, uh, but business is still busy. And I think it's part which we can talk a little bit later about, you know, things that we've done in our business to set ourselves up for things like this to happen, whether it was a market crash, market correction, uh, global pandemic, you know, and as long as you try and recession proof your business, which I know you talk a lot about, just making sure, you know, your business is a solid foundation. Uh, you'll get through anything. So it's super important. So we'll, we'll cover that a little bit. Um, so I have a lot of people on here that don't know who you are. Obviously, I know who you are. Um, tell them a little bit about who you are. Ooh, we may have a little technical difficulty here. Let's see. I'm not hearing you, Mark, if you're talking. Whether it was a market crash, market correction, a global. Um, tell them a little bit about who you are. Oh, I'm frozen. Oh. I'm back. You there? All right. We're going to try this again. Sorry All right, you're that. back with me. <laughs> that's okay. That's why we go live, right? That's that's what happens with live. Sometimes <clears throat> it freezes. It happens, man. Absolutely. But yeah, man, no. So, you know, um, yeah, I think recession proofing is a good thing. I think being conscious of what's going on is it's very powerful to see, like, where we're weak, where we're strong. Um, Kevin, probably the best thing you've done over the years is just forge relationships. At the end of the day, it's really, I think that's what keeps people through the storms, honestly, man. Absolutely. You know, people always ask me, you know, because obviously David, who you know as well, you've been to a lot of his events, is, is one of my best friends. And people are always like, you know, how, how did you get in with them? And I'm like, I just built relationships with these people. I was just I was their friend before I was ever talking about title, asking them for title. I just simply built a strong foundation with a relationship. And then obviously that's what helps a business recession proof. Um, so we have tons of people on here that. Uh, don't know who the DM is. Tell them a little bit, just a, the Reader's Digest version of who you are. Uh, but most importantly, I think what DM stands for. Yeah. No, man. First of all, like I said, thank you for having me. I grew up in small town, Ohio, an hour east of Columbus, Ohio. Um, small town, hillbilly kid, you know, 650 people, great parents, hardworking mule world where we grew up. Like if you're not mule and you're not working, kind of you're lazy and all that. Um, started off doing real estate back in uh, June, uh, June 21st, 1996. Uh, started cranking it up. They had zero clue what I was doing. Messed it up. Every messed everything up. Still do today, probably, but not as much. That's the key. Um, nearly went bankrupt twice. Man, I did it wrong a bunch of times and uh, did it really wrong twice. Uh, never did go bankrupt. Almost did. Uh, figured out a way to get out of that, i.e., wholesaling real estate to make some quick cash um, to solve the problems. And uh, now today, sitting where I'm at, I'm in Parkland, Florida. I live here seven months a year, five months up in our house up in Cleveland, where I'm getting ahead up to actually on Tuesday. And um, man, just, you know, trying to live life. I got two little kids now, five-year-old and a one-year-old and a wife and, you know, and own and participate in a lot of different companies at this point, real estate, media, publishing, supplements um, and such. That's great. You know, I, I follow your stuff. Obviously, we'll talk a little bit about your podcast and your cigars and coffee show. Uh, you know, and for anyone that watching this, just just look up Mark Evans DM and follow him because, you know, the content is real. So we were on a call this morning where you had uh, you had someone on that was, uh, I guess, in one sense, trying to look a little bit maybe bigger than he was. Uh, and you have no problem. You called the guy out on it. And look what happened in the end. He messaged you and, and you were right. He was wrong. But the interesting part is you were just laying into him to genuinely help him, yeah. genuinely unfold the the false perception of what he feels his business is, which it wasn't to show. Him. I mean, this guy was challenging you like to make bets with you to show he's bigger than you. And it's like, that's not what it's about. No, you know, it's not about that. He's telling you, well, put up a thousand dollars. I'm like, 
I was at a charity event with you where you put up 30 grand for charity. So this isn't like, you know, who's bigger or not. This is about like, how can we truly help you shift your focus and build a business? And that's what I think next, maybe we can talk a little bit on the difference between working a business, like you you referenced wholesaling. We have a lot of wholesalers on uh, versus running a company. And what is the difference? Yeah, big difference. Real quick, the DM stands for dream maker to my mother, but deal maker to the world. Um, that's good and bad. It's got a double-edged sword being a deal maker all the time. But, um, you know, yeah, I mean, listen, I think a lot of people say they have a company. I think a lot of people, I used to do this for years. I have a company. I'm a business owner. But it never would produce revenue if I didn't show up. It wouldn't produce revenue if I didn't make the calls. It wouldn't produce revenue if I didn't close the deals. It wouldn't produce revenue if I didn't go meet the sellers and buyers because I started off in the real estate space. Um, so really, that's a high-paying job working for a psycho myself, right? And I, I honestly, I was, I'd was i make 30 grand. I'd go play. I'd be down to two grand. I'd have to go make 30 grand again, go play. Like It was a very vicious cycle, not even a good cycle. I just didn't have any good business mentors. I didn't understand business. I thought I, just because I said I was in business, I was in business. That's only half the battle Get starting starting in Building and growing is kind of two different things. But for me, you know, at the end of the day, <clears throat> I just realized that if I want to get to the next level, honestly, kept, you know, this is the true story. Like I kept going to all these real estate investment club meetings, honestly, and I'm meeting all these guys from guy like I was young. I was 18 years old, 18 to 20. I went to a lot of them, hundreds. And I'd meet guys that are 55, 60. I'd meet guys at 45. I'd meet guys at 20, my age, whatever, 18, 20. And everyone always seemed to have the same problem. The difference was the guys were in the business for 20 plus years. And I'm like, wait a minute, if I had that problem and I'm brand new and they have that problem 20 years later, why do they keep having the same problem? And really what it come down to is they really weren't a business owner. You know, they always had the problem. They're riding the emotional financial roller coaster of not owning a real business. And not to say you don't have emotional roller coasters or financial roller coasters in a real business, but it's just different. There's some separation of uh, financials, you know, personal financials isn't your bank financials at your company because I played that game for a lot of times. Like, oh, I have a lot of money in my business account. I don't have to work today. I got a lot of money. But you got to separate those action activities and all that. But as you start developing and becoming a real business owner, it really does change the game, Kevin. It, it's changed my life once I stopped playing business and started being business and um, really got me, held me accountable to a higher standard, honestly. I think it's great. You know, I talk to people all the time. We talk about the difference between working in your business, obviously, than on your business. And, you know, when I have like my my managers and we talk about, oh, we're going to hire a new person. They're like, but we're not doing enough deals for that person. I said, no, the whole idea, though, is I need to free up space in order to generate more deals and then have the staff available to handle those deals. So it's always about thinking bigger, not thinking about the dollars and cents, but thinking about you know, where are we going in three months and six months and 12 months as opposed to where, you know, where we are today. And, and it's very big. It's, it's a big focus that a lot of people do not understand when they're constantly working in their business. And we have tons of real estate investors and we have tons of uh, real estate agents because that's obviously our biggest market uh, yep. amongst other businesses. But but these are people specifically that that just don't, you know, they're not thinking bigger right? They're just not thinking bigger. They're thinking about the deal versus the opportunity that could be in in three to six or 12 months from now, or about how to maybe fill your pipeline. So they're constantly working about showing the next property or signing the next contract as opposed to what could be down the line. Yeah. This little guy, I have my little guy in the office too here with me. <laughs> it's nonstop. Yeah, no, I mean, you're right. You know, I, I think the big thing is about this is the biggest problem is we've never been taught to make an investment in other people. So the mule in us thinks that we can do it better. We can do it quicker. We can do it easier. We can do it less for less money. And it's like, well, why can't we like hire people? Why can't we collaborate with people? Why can't we say, hey, Kevin, I'm really weak on title work. Can you help me out? Like that's the part, like again, if a real estate broker or any investor thinks that you're a cost to them, they really don't understand anything. If they're shopping cost, and not looking at value, like, and first of all, you guys live in a very, it's a very tight market already in your business. It's not like they're gonna save $2,000 of closing. It's already tight numbers. What you're really doing is buying a relationship, knowing that you can call Kevin if, if stuff starts hitting the fan last minute. No, and more importantly, he's gonna respond back. 
You know what I mean? In your space, that's a very big deal. And if you've never dealt with a bad title company, you, one, you haven't done enough business maybe, and two, you're very fortunate to know Kevin. So, because it is the biggest problem in that industry. You know, very, like a lot of title companies are very bad, um, but they get away with it because you need to close deals through them. Um, but you guys have obviously done an amazing job with that. And, and you understand the value of investing in people to buy back your time. And that's the biggest thing is I always ask people like, what are you trying to do? What, what can your business do for you? Not what can I do for the business? Cause I do everything. That's how I got started the business. But it gets to a point when just like a child, they grow up and they got to go on to the next level. But now what can the business do for me? I've put 18 years of my life into this. How can it start producing revenue for me now? And I just don't, I think we get caught up. We're so busy just making money. We forget to get wealthy, honestly. All right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't get it. They don't get it. And and we've always put relationship first. You know, I'd sooner sit down with a real estate agent and say, how can I help you recession proof your business? How can I help you leverage social media? How can I help you generate more business? Yep. And in exchange, <laughs> you're going to want to do your title work with me. Mm -hmm. And that's plain and simple. That's the philosophy. I don't solicit for title work. I simply add value, build relationships, and title work just happens to show up uh, because of the relationships and the effort. So it's great. Um, so let's let's shift uh, a second here. You mentioned the word mule a couple of times. So mm -hmm. I have your book here. I see it over your shoulder there. Tell the viewers a little bit about your book uh, you know, and, and what the benefit is. And those of you that want a copy, you can obviously grab it on Amazon. I highly encourage you, you know, Mark is a doer and, and I do a lot with uh, disc profiling and stuff for many years. I was certified in training. Um, so I'm just like you, I'm a doer, like, give me an idea. Let me go do it. And then let the team implement it. Let me just create and then let the team implement. So talk a little bit about your book, uh, and, and the benefits of, of the viewer buying it. Yeah, I think in business and life in general, you know, the book's not just about business, even though that's what we're about. But, you know, it's really expanding your brain and understanding that there is more to life than just being a mule and muling it out, waking up because you have to and getting to work because you got to go there and driving an hour each way because that's the way it is. And, you know, there, why, why are we a mule? Why, have we ever asked that, ourselves that question? Where does it come from? And uh, it's interesting because I grew up in a small town, Ohio, and if you shake someone's hand and they don't have calluses on their hands, they're lazy. If you work, if, if Kevin and I are talking one-on-one -on -one in my hometown and I say, hey man, I just worked a long 16 hours, he's gonna say, man, you're a whip, I did 17 hours, what are you, what are you slacking off for? So it's mule, like we wear it with pride, like yes, I work harder than you, yes, I do more than you, yes, but I don't know what that means. I'm trying to, if you're watching this and you're in business or anything, trying to generate more revenue, you know, money for yourself, the real reason you're doing it, it's not for the money, it's for the time that you're going to buy back with the money you gain. Hence, when Kevin's talking about hiring people, we talk about hiring and managing. We talk about the thought on the thoughts. Why do you buy the way you do? Why do you sell the way you do? Why do you react the way you do? Why are you constraining your growth the way you do? Where did these thoughts even come from? Mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, the people you care, care about most, care most about you are where these thought processes come from. Have we ever challenged them? Not, not challenge them because we're trying to be disrespectful to our people that love us the most, but to challenge us to like, how can I get bigger, better? That's, I mean, Kevin, the show, right? People come on here, they get a new mind expansion. They understand different thought processes and all that. It's, it's kind of something we all could get better at. How do we get tighter? How do we get stronger? Um, and then, just really talking about where's the magician opportunities. You know, you don't have to be the best at everything. It's okay. Let your guard down, take that mask off and realize that it's okay to like, look like you do nothing. The beautiful thing about a magician, guys like you and I, Kevin, everyone thinks we do nothing all day. Well, you're lucky, you work for yourself, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm burning the midnight oil. I'm waking up probably before most people at 4.44 in the morning. We're already doing, I've done more by 8 a.m. than most people has done than they're going to do in the whole day. Like just because you work hard doesn't mean you work efficient. Just because you work long hours doesn't mean you're productive hours. Like, so these are all things like the goal as a magician is to be, how do we do one to many? That's what this video is. Right now we're being a mule. One-on-one -on -one we'd be a mule. But now we're shooting a video and this goes to the interweb across the world forever. This is one to many. This message would get heard by 100 people or 10,000 people or millions of people. So how do we multiply our efforts and just start thinking a little different? You got to be a mule. It's okay. Just realize one, that you're a mule and two, that there's a different level out there. Once you rec recognize mule and magician, it's kind of just a good play on words to understand like there's a different level 
as you start developing as a business owner. Absolutely. Yeah. I posted something the other day, one of my quotes, because I do a daily quote for my clients and, and friends. Uh, and I usually put it on some type of image. And part of what I tell people is like, I'm working harder than the 99%. So if I want to be the 1%, I have to outwork the 99%. So it's getting up at 5 a.m. training with a U.S. Marine. I see your post sometimes, you know, right as you're posting it, I'll send you a little message. Yep. You know, so I'm up at 5 a.m. I'm training with a U.S. Marine. I'm keeping my health in shape. I'm always thinking about business. I think about business day and night. Um, so we're always working, but I think a lot of it is like, what are you working on? Yeah. Which is what would set one, let's say, title company versus the other is that I'm always about strategic planning. I'm always about, I'm not worried about the deal. I'm not worried about the closing and the pro. That's why I have the staff. I'm worried about how do I generate more business. And one of the important things you were talking about today on your call was how many businesses, you know, because we talk about failure a lot, you know, how many times you and I have failed at something? <laughs> Probably daily, right? I mean, daily. Say, how many times a day? <laughs> yeah. How many times in a day have we come up with an idea and we're like, no, nope, that didn't work. But, and not only that, we've invested money in it. We've invested time, energy, effort, thought process, consulting, uh, and then the deal just doesn't work. I mean, I've consulted with so many people on so many great ideas and it's like, it just doesn't work. It's not, you know, and, and other people just can't get there. And, and we're not talking about necessarily money. We're just thinking about the idea of what is going to take you to the next level. If you're a real estate investor, what's going to take you to the next level? You know, I consult a lot with wholesalers and I tell them like, if your game is just a wholesale, Unless you're going to be the number one wholesaler in town and, and you're building this amazing list that you're going to be able to sell one day, you're not building anything. You're just getting a paycheck, maybe a great paycheck, which is yeah. good. But if you were to get hurt, you were to get sick, you were to have to take off, that business is no business. Yep. Where you're looking from like the title perspective, we're building a foundation that people call us all the time. Hey, are you interested in selling? Hey, are you interested in merging? You know, because you're building a foundation, a clientele, a staff, a business, an opportunity. And real estate agents and investors can do the same thing because we talk a lot about like how a wholesaler can then maybe pick up one or two rehabs a year. And then maybe one or two rehabs can turn into one or two rentals a year. And now you're building a portfolio. You're building a business that has an asset that you can sell. So what do you think the importance is about people that are working day to day about or building a foundation of something that is is sellable. Yeah, man, I, I think at the end of the day, you know, real estate investors have to stop being real estate investors and start being real estate business owners that have those channels of opportunity. Like you said, wholesaling, uh, it's, a, it's an arm in the company. Rehabbing is an arm in the company. If you want to own rentals, that's another arm in the company. I think us as real estate investors, we're like, oh, we're just going to rehab. Well, that's a whole different Access. That's a whole different process, procedures, everything's different. A lot of long tail, you got six, 12 months of rehab going on, depending how big it is. Are you good at project management? I suck at project management, I just wanna get it done, pay more, I don't care. So I'm always over budget. I'm always under time, but always over budget on dollars. So it's a, that's not my thing, I just, I just wanna be done with it. So I, I don't really do a whole lot of rehabs. I've done many, I've done thousands of them actually over the years. So I gotta wear a hat, man, I don't have any hair left. But, and it's funny, my wife and I, we like, when I, when I deal with anybody that's in like the uh, rehab industry period, like from handyman to anybody, I'm like on them. Where you at? What's going on? Yes, today's Wednesday. I know we're still on for Friday, right? We're still on for Friday. And I'm doing that every day. And my wife's like, that's your psycho. But I'm like, that's this is how I function. That's how I like, because these guys literally, I mean, they're off doing something else tomorrow. So I think you just like, once you realize you have something, understand what your real value is in the space, just like you, Kevin, it really is the relationships. If you really are trying to be the best business person, comes down to great relationships, doing what you say you're going to do, over delivering, constantly providing value. And you can do that through videos, email, meetups. I mean, it's endless at this point with what technology we have today. And uh, just building that real amazing database. Because that's what people want, as you know. They want the data. Absolutely. And, uh, good data. And if, you have, if you're making money with the data, it's even better. It's worth a lot more. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, one of my great clients is one of the largest wholesalers in town, does a ton of deals. And, you know, the asset is in his list. There are in his buyers. There are people that go to him just so they don't have to deal with anyone else because they know who he is. They want to work with him. Uh, and then you have others that are trying to build 
every aspect of the business. And the problem is they're not any good at any one thing. They're failing at all of them because they're trying to put their hand in so many cookie jars and doing it themselves as opposed to saying, all right, I'm going to set up this company in this division, but I'm going to have this person run it. And I'm just going to be like me and you, where we're just going to create that business. And then that business is going to flow. And I'm just going to keep watching it yep. grow and grow and grow. I'm going to help. I'm mm -hmm. going to consult. But when these people try and get involved in every aspect of the business, nothing works right. It just fails. It doesn't, it doesn't work because they're stuck. They are stuck, man. But the truth is like, specifically in real estate and business in general, it's been pretty good for like the last three or four years. Really good. Like you could, you could throw a dart at a house and buy it for almost retail and still make money. So the problem is success hides a lot of failure. Um, I've been there before where I'm super successful financially. I'm more successful than I've ever been, but my business is actually collapsing in front of my eyes and I don't see it because it's getting overtaken by complacency, um, lack of effort. You know, we just take our eye off the ball. It happens sometimes when you're building but um, I remember my team, like I, we'd go to them, I'm like, guys, we have to adjust, we have to make, they're like, but the numbers look amazing. The accountant's like, dude, we got this, we got this. And I'm like, no, it's off. I'm, I'm telling you, it's off and here's why. And I'd show them. And then all of a sudden you adjust and then all of a sudden you get the real big pop. <laughs> you know, like you said, we were becoming, we were doing a lot of things, but nothing good or nothing well. Yeah, and I think when you can step back, it's important. You step back, you can take a bigger picture, look at what you're creating, yeah. and then you have the people that, and that's where we'll, the next topic we could talk about are mentors, but that's where having a, a team, whether it's your mentors, whether it's your general managers, your, your CFOs, your CEOs, whoever they are in your organization, to help show you maybe something you were missing. And now you're just going to figure, well, I'm going to fix that. Here's how I'm going to fix it. Now go fix it. Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, it's wild, man. I, I, again, I, I think we've never been taught on how to ask for help. I think everyone's out here trying to figure out how to do everything themselves, how to really mule it out. You know, I always talk about the who to do the how. I, I'm not that smart. I'm very clear that I'm not, I don't I've never lie to myself about that. And, um, you know, when I need help, I, I genuinely need help. So I ask for, I ask for help and it's always served me because people actually want to own it. Like, you know, my accountant loves doing accounting. I hate it. <laughs> it's never going to happen. You know, my deal coordinator, Roseanne, she's been with me 13 years. She absolutely loves coordinating the deals and talking to title, talking to title, you know, like mortgage companies and blah, 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 blah. She, she loves it. It's easy. It's fun. It's, she has a very good structure. I can't do it. It's not in my wheelhouse, but I'm good at creating the deal, handing off what you're good at too, Kevin. Just like creating it and then getting out of the way. <laughs> it's like the old rotisserie where they said, set it and forget it, you know, yep, set exactly. it and forget it and just know that you have the right team. So let's talk a little bit. You know, you talked about how you're not that smart. And obviously, I beg to differ. I, I, I think you're a genius at what you do well, right? You may not be smart at everything, but you're clearly smart at something. But you and I have a unique story because from reading your bio, you know, everyone bet against you for finishing high school. That was the same with me. Um, I went to a, a very special school that they, you know, there were only maybe 20 of us because we needed kind of an intimate learning and I hated school. I, I didn't want to be there. And nobody thought I was going to ever make it out of school. And not that I was a bad kid. I just didn't like school. I wanted okay. to get out and create, which is what I did job to job. So talk a little bit about that, how someone who you say is not so smart, maybe did, was bets against them to graduate high school, turned into the empire that you have today. Yeah, man, listen, I, I appreciate that. I, I think, uh, you know, I, I'm very good at creating Again, I'm a relationship guy. I love the relationship side. I understand that side. I, I know where people are falling short. I know where they want to go based off of what I've – because I've been there, done that, especially if it's an entrepreneur helping them. But in, like, just business in general, man, I, I think the opportunities are endless. Once you understand – like, for me, my, my smarts are, like, just being genuinely – I really want to help. Like that's my genuine, unique ability. I really want to help. And on top of that, I'm going to ask different questions. I'm not, I don't like the surface level questions if we're trying to get results. Cause the problem is surface level questions. We can all do that ourselves. And the, but if we don't ask the right question, we don't get the right answer. The problem is everyone's asking questions, expecting a different answer, but it's a surface level question. We're just trimming the trees. I want to go to the root. I want to go to what you really want. I'm trying to figure out what people aren't really saying. Like me, I really want to be stupid, rich, well, like massively wealthy. Not for the money, but for what the money can do, right? 
So I remember back in the day when I was learning to develop wealth, people were like, you don't need all that money. What would you do with all that? You know, they're actually trying to suppress it. And I'm like, but you don't have any money. And you're telling me I don't want any money. So they're trying to make me like them. And I, I like to give. I do the charity stuff. We're, I mean, we're always doing stuff like that on that level. And I want to do a lot more, like many millions of more, hundreds of millions, hopefully, and over the years. But, like, it's people are out there telling me what I can't do my whole life. I just want people to tell me what I can do, even though I get excited when people tell me I can't do something, Kevin. <laughs> well, yeah, I think it challenges you, right? I was actually uh, – I worked out with, uh, you know, my Marine trainer today, and we were actually talking about that, about – uh, the last dance and the Michael Jordan story and and all the people he was talking about, like the races that he runs and all the people that go to him and tell him, you know, <laughs> they, they think he's older, so he's not going to be able to beat them. And it's a mental game, right? It's a mental game. If you tell me I can't beat you, I'm going to beat you. You know, <laughs> so you want to talk smack, I'm going to beat you. I was on a call with, um, you know, Jesse Itzler. Yeah. Uh, so he was on a he did this massive race uh, over the weekend. which saw was, it was like the last man standing type race. And he only made it about seven hours. And he said, I knew I wasn't going to win. But it was the mental game about getting there, about someone telling him, you know, you can't do that. Or someone telling him, you know, there's no way you're going to win. And these people just get out and it's all a mental game. It's who has the better mind. It may not be who's in the best physical shape. So when it comes to business, it's not who's the best real estate agent. It's not who, you know, gets the largest listing. It's about who has the mental game to survive this business because when the market turns, and I was in the real estate market before the crash of, of 07, 08, and I, and I survived through it. And it was who was going to come out on top, who was going to have the big enough mind game to get in and play the game to make sure you came out on top. And that's what I think people aren't getting. People are always like, I'm going to wholesale a deal. I'm going to rehab a deal. And they're not thinking about the bigger picture about what if you had a team that was doing five deals, 10 deals a month, and what could you do with that money? How many lives can you change with that money? And, and it's a, it's bigger thinking. And well, I again, they're trying to solve the multiplication problem with addition. You know what I mean? You can't go to one to 10 doing addition one plus one and like it just doesn't work and because the your brain goes instantly how can I do more to double my business just work twice as hard that's what your brain figures out but when you create such a massive constraint where I have to go from one deal a month to ten you physically genuinely don't know how to do it so it's a, such a stretch now you have to start your brain starts thinking who do I recruit who do I hire what does it look like what joint ventures do I create I mean now you start creating passive opportunity to make that goal a reality. You're not going to go from one to ten. You might go from one to seven, but it's less, it's better than one to one, <laughs> one two. You know, so it's like like you have to stretch it and start asking different questions and start creating different answers. People yeah, are right. still go to busy. one to ten and and land at five as opposed to going one to one and you know end up back at one, right? Yeah. And this is why people get burnt out. This is why people get overwhelmed. This is why people are frustrated. Because they're trying to solve the wrong problem with the wrong equation. And you're, you're frustrated. You're watching me develop and grow. I've realized I can't do this myself. I need help all the time. I need help every day, 24-7. And my efforts need to be one-to-many efforts all the time. I'm not trading time for dollars. I'm not doing it. You know, most people are, like, trying to save $10 an hour to do their own basic accounting. And I'm like, pay 20, I don't even want to hear about it. Let's just get it done. So it's just a different thoughts. What are you spending your time? You know, and what are you doing all weekend? What do you do all night? I don't know what people do all day, Kevin. Like, you know, having kids, like you have kids. I still don't even know what I did before kids with all my time. You know, and I worked a lot and I still work. But like now it's just different, isolated work, you know, just get stuff done and get results. Absolutely. Well, you're creating, right? You're, you're not working, you're doing Yep, and, exactly. and it's a big difference. So we have a lot of people that are uh, a big following of real estate agents. So let's talk about because, you know, we, we talked a little bit and I'm always about like you have to learn from the mentor. You have to learn from the mistakes. I've been very blessed in my life because I've had people like David Dweck, who has been a mentor of mine. But like I said, he was a friend first. Um, but he basically taught me the wholesaling business and how to do double closings. Nice. And it, so I didn't in, in my career, I didn't have to hire too many mentors in order to go to the next level, because a lot of my friends, we created like a strategic partnership, but most people don't have that opportunity. So 
the person that's watching this that is like, well, I'm doing one deal a month. Maybe next month I won't do any deals. How do they really engage someone, whether it be you or someone else? They need somebody to learn from the failures in order to launch. Like how important is that? Because I've hired mentors and I, I've done a lot of these trainings and I always find the value, but I'm, I'm a little different with that because I want to go in, get one great idea and I'm going to go implement it where that's a lot more aren't going to be able to do that. But that's the real secret. Go in to get one thing, not a hundred things. You can't implement three, let alone a hundred. You know, that's a big, that's a big takeaway for any mastermind or mentor group that you're looking for. Look for the one thing, not the hundred things. The real thing is, this is the truth. This is how I think about it. When I'm in a mastermind, which I'm in multiple all the time, I'm thinking, how can I, what's the one thing I can take from here that will eliminate a hundred other things? So I'm looking for the real big piece. The real problem is, Kevin, is most people are focused on the little micro pieces because they're controllable, they're easy, they're not uncomfortable or that uncomfortable. And they're, they're making improvements on their copy where, you know, like their email letter or whatever. And it's like, I went from a 1% open rate to 1.2% open rate. Like that's such a small 20% 20, 20 increase if that. It's so small to even measure to know if it's even real. I'm more looking for, I don't really touch anything unless I get a 50 plus percent increase. It's just not worth my time. And then what happens is if I can do it once and you do it twice and you do it three times, now you start creating a compound effect on all these pieces. So meaning, for example, if you if you guys are watching this and you're a real estate agent or broker, I think, I think the biggest fell on this side, honestly, Kevin, is they don't continue relationships. They sell you and they move on. I think it's the worst thing you can do. I've bought thousands of houses. I've bought many cars, many watches. You know how many times I've been followed up with? Zero. <laughs> you know, zilch. And they, I have a lot of friends. My friends have friends. Like, if you create that relationship and connect with people like you and David did, you created a relationship first. I, I, another problem is I see every business owner do this, is you got to remember, first and foremost, you're a marketing and sales business. Everyone is. What your product is, that's yours is title. Mine might be supplements. Mine might be real estate. Mine might be media. What in other companies that you're in, like, you, but if I don't market and I don't sell, I have zero business. And marketing comes in all shapes and sizes and different forms. Kevin, you're very giving marketing. You know, you're doing cool marketing and connecting and relationship building and beating the phone up and meeting people in person, etc. So, and if you're an agent, you need to be finding someone that can teach you sales and marketing. You have to do that. And um, don't be scared of sales. Sales is a good thing. You know, there's people right now that want to buy their dream home, but they're intimidated to call a real estate agent. They're scared. They're like, what do I, I don't know what to say. Maybe it's their first time they've ever have a little bit of money and they're intimidated. I've seen this happen a million times. So instead of you advertising and staying in front of them and talking about your family or what you like or don't like in a cool way, of course, with copy and marketing, there's so many neat things you could do to start picking up eyeballs that most people are avoiding. You know, everyone's so busy trying to get that next new client. What about the clients you already have? What are you doing right now today? Like there's so much there, but if you're looking for a mentor, I guess that's what we're talking about. Um, it's never been easier. Go on social media, type in a hashtag and follow a million people until you're blue in the face. But if it was me, the first thing I would do is say, what do I need to gain from a mentor? And it could be marketing, sales, mindset, blah, blah, whatever it is. Pick that one thing and go find the mentor that has what you want. And by the way, one mentor doesn't have everything you want, <laughs> right? Don't come to me to be the best dad mentor. I, I, I'm trying to be a great dad, but it's a work in progress. I, they're, they're young. I still, still, you know, only time will tell. So, but on business, I'm very good at that. I get it. I understand it. I think I could help a lot of people on business side. Um, but you got to be like, if that's where you're at, you got to find out where you're at. Don't try to like, again, what you said earlier, don't try to learn a hundred things from the mentor. Go in there with one real thought of what would help you and then pay them for the result. By the way, you're not paying for a mentor, you're paying for results, right? right? If you got a good mentor. And you're paying for someone who has the expertise. You know, we go to all the investment clubs and we speak at all of them and um, we've helped set up investment clubs for, for some of the people here. And one of the things I notice is, you know, obviously their business is bringing in different people in different genres of, of the real estate business, whether it's wholesaling or rehabbing or st self storage units or buying at the courthouse auction. And there's always those same five or 10 people that are there buying every course and they think they're going to get rich. And I'm like, I always tell them, and it's great to buy it, 
But the thing is, you need to come in this room knowing what do you want to do? Do you want to build a business? You need to hire someone like Mark Evans. Do you want to do wholesaling? Then you need to hire someone, not like the guy that was on your show today, yeah. uh, you know, that guest, but you need to hire someone who knows wholesaling, who can show their, their profit and loss statement, show their balance statement, maybe show a bank statement that they actually have money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I tell people all the time when they want to ask me, like, are you really as successful? I'm like, you want to see my tax return? You want to see my bank statement? I have no problem showing it to you because I'm not hiding anything. I'm not the title company saying I'm doing 200 deals a month when I'm doing 20 deals. Yeah. My success, yeah. I disclose everything of what I do because I would rather you as a title company follow me and learn to be just as successful as I am. You know, you had a, a title company on a couple of weeks ago. I know it's a title company you use up in Ohio, and they actually work in Fort Lauderdale as well. Um, and I connected with them because it's all about collaboration. Like they have great ideas and great concepts. And, and we were chatting about a bunch of different things. They got an award. We got an award. And we were chatting back and forth because we're not in fear. We're not living in fear that someone's going to take our business. There's enough business for every title company in town because no one's going to work harder than me. Exactly. No one's going to get up at 444 in the morning like you yep. in order to create opportunity and create success and train people. So I think when you're searching for a mentor, for those people that are watching this, you need to, to find someone that's actually doing, that doesn't just have some fancy course, that isn't going to really teach you much of anything. You know, one of my good friends is a wholesaler and he meets with people, I think his fee is like five grand and he'll sit in the office. There's no book, there's no CD manual. He literally just takes you in his car and sits in my conference room and teaches you how to wholesale real estate. Like you need to find someone who's doing, yeah. not someone who just talks a big game. Yeah, man. Listen, I've done thousands of deals. I have not looked at a HUD for years. I have. I, if you ask me, like, hey, Mark, how do you? What? How much is a title cost? I don't know. I don't care. It's more. I'm. I'm not saying I'm below it. I'm just beyond it. You know what I mean? And, or above it, I should say. It's just I'm beyond it. Like I'm building other stuff. I could call. I, I know who to call. I could call you. I could call you know Chris or Kelly that run world class title. I could call my guy COO that runs the real estate side. And then even teaching real estate. I, I my problems aren't the same problems I used to have in that industry. So I won't even take someone's money to help them learn wholesaling. Even though my team's done millions of dollars in deals that way, as well as retail and and turnkey and all that. But like I can't do it because. I'm not in the day-to-days anymore. I know what you can do. I know how to do it. It's just, I think you could get better benefit from someone else. That's, like you said, a guy like you like, can sit side by side with you in the office and make it happen. That's, that's gold for anybody. Oh yeah, for sure. That's but how I started. I coached people doing the same exact thing. I charged eight grand back in the day. I used to run little ads in the new, this is newspaper days. And I would bring people in the office in my local community, Columbus, Ohio. I would drive them around to the same exact thing do deals. What happened is I created a massive environment of joint venture opportunities. I didn't do it on purpose. I was just showing them how to do the business. So we think everyone has the money. We think everyone has the confidence we have. We think everyone has the knowledge we have because we're so close to it. But what happened is I find that, you know, Nancy was amazing at finding great deals. She didn't want to own them. She just wanted a quick five grand and get out of the way. I'd give her five grand. I'd go make seven grand. You know, Steve, he wants to take the deal down and he'll pay a premium. So my job was simply just to kind of like, you know, control it and direct it. <laughs> you know, uh, I have title companies send me deals all the time. Like we don't want to do double closings. We we think it's too risky. We don't we're just going to send it to you. You handle it. And we get that all the time. So, you know, you you create your your place in the business and, and you're going to be fine. You're going to recession proof your business. Yeah, um, I think abundance, man. Honestly, Kevin, the biggest thing we've talked about is abundance. You know, everyone's out here saying they're abundant, abundant, abundant. But all their actions are like they're, they're like tight as can be. And it's like scary to me because I, I genuinely think people want to be abundant thinking. But if you think people cost money when you're making money, that's not abundant thinking. It's very scarcity thought process. Like if I give this guy three grand a month, I'm going to lose money. But what if you pay this person three grand a month and you make 30 grand that month extra? Like there's just abundance to me and like help. I want to help anybody. I don't care if you're my direct. I don't I, like you. The work, the, the secret sauce is doing the work, by the way. <laughs> you know, it's not it's not what I have. It's what I do with what I have. That's how the magic happens for all guys like us, right? So, or anybody succeeding. 
you have to still do the work. That's why I don't mind sharing it because I know how hard it is. <laughs> if you can go do it and go make more money than me, go at it. I think it's amazing because I know what it takes to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. And so we go what, one last question and then we'll we'll wrap up here. We're, we're pushing 40 minutes here. Uh, I want to talk a little bit. So we go a lot of uh, industry uh, related events. So I go to a lot of like title CE seminars. So it's all my peers, other title companies, oh. attorneys. And the number one thing they all say is you own independent style. We see you everywhere. So let's talk about branding a little bit. Uh, I have tons of friends. I'd probably see a good 20 friends of mine that live in your community. And anytime we talk about, you know, say, oh, you know, the DM guy, they're like, D he lives by me. I'm like, yeah. So they know the DM. So let's talk, obviously, because your brand is there, not just the people online that follow the DM, but, you know, you always have the hats that say DM, the shirts that say DM. And everywhere you're walking on your, your you know, you talk from the walk in the morning, my friends all see you and they're not in the business. So they don't know you from real estate. They just know the DM that's walking around the development that you live in. So let's talk a little bit how important branding is and uh, what strategy, maybe something people can do to understand better what branding is and the benefit it has to building a company. Well, I, I mean, I, you know, there's a reason Coca-Cola and Pepsi and, you know, the hat for me would be like a costume, right? Ronald McDonald, my crazy shirts is part of my costume, if you will. My Rolls Royce has been a part of my costume for 12 years. My nice cars, I've had nice cars. I've always been a nice car guy. I've always liked that. So it's kind of always my thing. Who's cool cars? That must be the DMs. And then the DM really started taking on a whole new light, you know, probably 15 years ago. And then I got new logos and all that stuff. But honestly, man, to me, it's really like, first of all, you got to live your brand. I live it. It means something. When I see DM, it means something. It's not like DM, that's it. It really does have a purpose to me all the way down to the core, like dream maker to my mom, deal maker to my, you know, it's funny. It's very interesting. My wife's name's Dina. My name's Mark DM. My daughter's name is Drea. My son's name's Mark. You know, direct marketing. I do a lot of direct mail to get my deals. So there are a lot of DM coincidences, dad and mom, whatever. I, I think it's very, to, with that said, I think it's very important to be branding. Um, I do love the brand. Like I said, it, it's on everything. It drives my wife nuts sometimes, actually. <laughs> but just like you, man, independence title. I mean, you got the blues and the purples, you know, you, with your images that you're doing in the helicopters and your, you know, your slingshot and your shoes and I mean, if people aren't picking this up, more importantly, doing something with it. I mean, you're I I'm in the game forever, though. And I know you are, too. Like, why wouldn't I want to brand me? You know, I want, I want it to mean something. Like, if you see the DM, the truth is, too, it's a conversation starter. Because I don't have, like, a DM solo. It doesn't say deal maker under it. So people are like, what's DM? Especially at events, they think it's more like direct mail or direct marketer or whatever. And it's like, oh, deal maker. You know, so they're like, oh, man, that's a deal. Man. I, I, I want to be a deal maker. What's that look like? And then it's just conversation, you know, and or like Kevin, if someone walks by, you know, like you are an independent. Oh, you know, that title company. It's like I am that title company. What's going on? <laughs> and then boom. It's, I mean, that's how it works. Right. Right. Yeah. We so we create I mean, two great things that we've done, which were our real estate rock star shirt, which we put a very little logo on it because it's the same thing. It was in one of the letters, we put just this round logo. Um, mm -hmm. So we didn't really brand it. So we just put real estate rock star to get people to engage and start talking. Uh, and everyone wears the shirts. Hey, I want a shirt. And it just automatically connects back to us. And the other thing was the shoes. People are like, oh, you're in the shoe business. I'm like, no, I'm in the branding business. I want to brand my business. So when you look at that cool pair of blue, purple, and white shoes, you're going to ask like, those are pretty cool. Where did you get those? Yep. And the whole concept behind it is it's just about branding. It's about brand awareness. It's about setting yourself apart. So whatever you're doing is great. So one of the things I want to talk real quick about, are the, so the real estate agent that works for the big real estate company, the Remax agent, they brand Remax. I think it's a big mistake. I don't know what your opinion is on it. I know David used to work for uh, Remax for a long time, and then he decided to switch because I'm like, why are you branding Remax when you should just be branding David Dweck? <coughs> so what is, what is your opinion on that? Because well, that's I mean, people, watching. Yeah, no, I agree. People don't do business with Remax. They do business with you, the individual. And if you're building your individual business and your brand – you need to definitely focus on you. It sounds a little selfish because it is, and it's okay to be selfish in this moment because this is your life. This is your moment to brand yourself for the future. 
if you see yourself as a rematch forever, if that's what you want to do, I guess do it. But like nothing's forever in my mind. So get there, build your brand. Not only that, have a personality in the brand. Even if you want to have Remax on the card, have a personality inside of the brand. As you, you're like, you know, we all know McDonald's, but we also know Ronald McDonald, right? You know, I know Remax, but I don't know any Remax agents. There's not, there's no one memorable. Maybe there is. Maybe I, I'm not really in that space. But like, who's memorable? And don't think about the person that you know because you're in the industry that's tight because you would know them just because of that. But like who has the – who's the crazy giver? Who's the funny person? Who laughs – like these are little things that you could do. And then the way you dress, what's on your website, how you send emails. Do you do a lot of emojis? I'm very big. Like I do a lot of emojis. Um, but I, I think branding is – I mean you have to do it. <laughs> Listen, I know wakey, wakey, 444, walk from the, you know, talk from the walk every day. You know, you hear it and you get it and you watch it and you listen to it. And you just, it's about the motivation and the brand and the, uh, I think being able to help people along the way, you don't have a problem telling people the truth. You don't have a problem telling people, you know, call them out. Like we were, you know, I referenced earlier about the person on the show today you know, you were calling them out like, dude, hop on the show with me. Here's the link. Get on live with me. Talk to me because yeah. I'm here to help you because what I think you're saying, you're full of shit. And yeah. sure enough, it wound up being he's talking a big game. And as soon as you called him out, he never got on the show. Yeah. And he then admitted that he was full of it. And the whole idea is like, I'm just trying to help you because you're telling false information to the people that are watching, which I would never want to do. I bring on quality guests that are going to tell you the way it is. They're going to tell you how they can help you. They're going to tell you the truth as to what they're seeing instead of sugarcoating and trying to sell you some fancy system. See, my interviews are not about selling anything. I hope people call you and hire you as a mentor and, and be part of your deal deal club and, and, you know, and just become successful from it. And then they say, you know what, Kevin, thanks for bringing that guest on because Mark changed my life. He changed the way I, I look at my business. And now instead of doing one deal, I'm doing 10 deals. And I'm like, great. That's, That's what it's about. For. That's what it's about. Same thing for me too, right? If anybody's watching that knows me and they're in the Florida area or wherever you do, you're doing all your you know, title work, I think just Florida, right? Just um, Florida, yeah. <clears throat> they should be calling you. I mean, this is great cross opportunities for everybody. I think the biggest thing too is, you know, you talk about me shooting straight with people and all that. The more I, I've done it a lot more since I have children because I think of my child. If my child came to me, it was giving me all these bullshit excuses. I'm going to shoot straight with him because I love him. I care about him. I'm not going to coddle him and tell him he's doing a great job when he's being a dick. I just can't do it. It's not in my blood, man. And it's wrong. I think it's wrong, actually. I think it's actually stealing from their future happiness. You're, like, I can make them happy by being – it won't make them happy in that moment. But the moment's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about the future because I know I'm not trying to be mean and hard on them. I'm just trying to be genuinely real and, and supportive. Like I want to support like the thought, how do we get better from here? Where are we growing? Why are you acting like this? How do we, you know, tighten this up? And when you see that, like, I think our job and our duty as parents and people that care, want to be, you know, real citizens of the world. We have to be like shooting straight with people instead of just Mickey Mouse and around, man. Well, just wait, that ride gets better and better. I have a 16 year old and a two year old. So <laughs> I'm on two different aspects and I'm like, it's, it gets easy and then it gets hard again. Just when you thought you solved it, you get thrown a curveball. That's just like business, man. Business. Just like business. <laughs> just like in business. All right. Last thing I wanted to touch on is obviously your cigars and coffee daily live shows and your uh, deal maker podcast. Just tell them a little bit about it because I think that's the most important thing. <laughs> obviously, I always tell people like go to my YouTube channel, watch my videos. If you think I have something of value, you want to work with me give me a call. Just check out my stuff because it's all there. And yeah. I think that's a great platform for people to go, not only for the education, but to learn a little bit about you. Don't just take my word for it, but just see it, see it live. Yeah. No, man, I think it's awesome. So I appreciate that uh, shout out. I, you guys have a podcast show called The Making of a DM and uh, there's 20 plus episodes over there. They usually come out every Wednesday, you know, every Wednesday, typically. Um, I've had a podcast show since 2015 um, prior to that, it was called the Real Estate Power Hour. Um, and, you know, just I just want to share real, real content. I can't help everyone one-on-one. -on -one. I just don't have time to do that anymore. So what I've been doing is I have high-level conversations. I try to take that and turn that into a 30 to 60-minute uh, conversation with you guys. Um, it might sound like I'm yelling at you sometimes, but I'm very passionate about what we do. So if you listen to it, you're like, this guy's crazy. You're partially right there. 
probably a lot of right, but I am a little crazy and I, but I just, I want to help and I'm just trying to figure out how to give more. I just turned 42 recently. I feel like half my life is, you know, behind me. Now I got to like, I only have 42 real good years left and I want to make the most of them, man. Cause I know what we can do. Um, and, and then like you said, they could always check out at Mark Evans DM on Instagram. I'm doing daily posts there daily, like quick snippets of stuff, of what's going on in life and on the show, cigars and coffee every day from eight 30 to nine, nine 30. I'm doing a show about a topic that I'm working on. I have six, six topics picked out already for the rest of the week. And, you know, just I love doing that, man. Another quick tip, too, real quick, Kevin, if you don't mind, I'm just going for an extra minute, is every investor or real estate agents watching and listening to this, why, they need to be coming to you and doing a collaboration video. Like, you know, it's a, so like you're share it with your investor buddies. Like, hey, here's how I close deals. Here's because everyone says title companies don't do double closings anymore. Here's how to do a double closings. Here's how to do day funding. Here's how to do like whatever kind of niche they're in. They should be using you and, and leveraging your brand as credibility factors. As long as it's serving, as long as you guys are closing deals with Kevin, don't bug him if you're not. But <laughs> as long as you're closing deals with them. But now like you're sitting here thinking, how do I add value to my people? We'll get with guys like Kevin. He wants to share value because it makes his business better. He's a giver. You guys collaborate. You send that email out once a week, once a month, once a quarter, whatever, because you're having new people come in through your funnel. So you say, hey, not sure how to read a HUD statement. Meet my friend Kevin, blah, 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 with independence title, X, Y, Z. Now it links you two together. Now you're actually educating your people. Same thing with real estate agents. A real estate agent, a lot of, a lot of uh, re retail people don't really understand about HUDs. They don't understand what it says, what it means. Why am I paying taxes here? Why is this line here? What's line 1400 mean? Blah, 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 blah. So you can just do a quick 15 minute explanation with, again, credibility. Hey, independent title's been in business for 20 years. I've been in business for one. You're getting the benefit of his longevity in the industry and his cycles and, you know, his branding and everything else you're doing. So there's so much opportunity if people would just like raise their hand and ask and like think a little bit. Think more about the client, not their problems, but the client's problems. I, I think part of that problem is what we talked about earlier. They're always thinking about themselves. Like, how can I get something? How can I get? And it's like, instead of the I focus, make it we focus. Like, let's do I do videos all the time. I invite other title companies. I'm like, let's do a video together. Let's talk about the business. There's enough business to go around. If one of my clients is going to go use you because of a video I did with you, I've lost their business long before I did that video. Exactly. You know, it not, makes only that, no sense. not only that, you, you didn't want that client anyways, if that's going on. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I invite them on all the time and people are like, come on, realtor, let's get on. Let's talk about your newest listing. Let's talk about marketing, a strategy you're having, a question you have. Yeah. Even if it's 10 minutes, one minute, five minutes, it doesn't matter. Let's just hop on live. And, and I think a lot of that is their camera shy and they don't want to, but we try and make it as easy as possible. And you get a nice product then. You put it up on YouTube, you put it up on Facebook, and you never know what person is going to come across that. You know, you may only get 100 views on your video in a year, but the thing is if one of those 100 buy a house from you, it was well worth the investment. Man. It's quality, not quantity at that level, especially on an independent agent um, investor level. Uh, you don't need a million eyeballs to do deals. Like you, the truth is, one person you could do one deal with a minimum one deal with that person if you have a good like process of getting them in, in, engaged in your content and all that. And if you're camera shy, you don't have to be the person shooting the video. Hire someone online for a hundred dollars. Meet them up with Kevin. Shoot a video. Have the, give them the interview questions and say, "Hey, this is Mark with Steve Johnson's Remax Agency. What I'm going to interview you today, independent title, blah blah blah." Like, it doesn't have to be you. It could be someone else. So don't. Again, I'm not. I'm not about excuses. That's the biggest thing. What I'm saying. Right. You know, people I are like, all the time. I get. I get like a list from them. I, you know, there are people like with you. I knew. I didn't need to ask you for anything. I didn't need to ask you what to talk about. I'm like, you do this all day long. But there are some of those guests where, you give me the bio. Give me the bullet points. Give me questions <laughs> that you feel you're going to be able to answer. So I don't mess you up while we're on the interview. Like, what do you want to talk about? And, and we kind of guide it to obviously add value, but we keep them on track with important things. With you, I knew I didn't need to do that because there's enough content to talk about. We can do this for five hours, um, <laughs> so it's just enough. So thank you so much for, for hopping on our call. Uh, you, I, I think you, you said at the beginning you're leaving. 
You headed yeah. back north? In my second, I head back up to Ohio for a while. Yep. I'll be up All right. There. Well, enjoy your summer up there. Be safe. Get out now before I, it's going crazy down here. So, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen here. But, like you yeah. said, I mean, we're, we're still doing deals. Business is growing. Contracts are getting written. And, and there are still people that, that need our help and our services. So, you know, we're, we're all doing great things. So, thank you for everything you do for yeah. everyone. For those of you watching, Follow Mark Evans DM on pretty much every social media platform. Check out his stuff, watch his videos. And I challenge you to engage with him. If he says, hop on live, hop on live. Ask him a question. Ask him a challenge because there's not many people that will get on and shoot straight with you that will just allow some random person to hop on a call, not even being previewed on what's going on. And he's someone that brings people on the show he may be able to help your next challenge. So I encourage you to, to follow him and do it. So thank you very much. Definitely. Thank you, Kevin, for having me, buddy. Appreciate it, man. Keep up the great work. For those of you watching, thank you so much. Tune in for the next episode of Title Talk. And don't forget, work hard, stay focused, never quit. We'll see you at the closing table. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.